I think we all have situations where we're supposed to be like social or chatted up, but they might be a little more awkward or uncomfortable than intended. And, you know, you, you got to sometimes come up with, with random things to say and just the whole situation. So kind of like when you're in class, you know, it's like the beginning of the school year and they hit you with the icebreakers. I always, I always wondered who came up with the icebreaker idea. You just got to sit there and kind of act like you're really interested in what everybody has to say, even though you're just there like against your will for 50 minutes every day of the week, or I guess 70, because for some reason they decided to, to promote ass numbness. My big thing always used to be like whenever I would have like a new group or a new table or like new people I'd sit by, I'd always think to myself like, you know, I'd go home, I'd be like, okay, I... That just crossed my mind. That's going to be fire. That's going to be a great joke. I can't wait to whip that out tomorrow. It's going to go great. So I'm all hyped. I'm all playing. You know, I'm, I'm going to sleep and stuff. You know, I'm, I'm ready for the next day. So then I get to the next day and I find a situation where it's good to, you know, you know, fly the joke out. But the thing is, like, when you have a fire joke, you have something really good to say. You just start in kind of a hurry to say it. So sometimes you'll try and cram it in like in a place that you probably should be a little more patient at. But you'll, you know, you'll throw that joke out there and then you won't really get any reaction. So you're like, okay, maybe they didn't hear me. So you go for take two and then you realize, no, they did hear you both times and they chose not to react. And that is a real slap to the abdomen. I mean, oh my goodness, you just got to sit there. You got to take it. Sometimes I go for like, like, oh, I got a yawn. Nope, I don't. I just look like a dumbass. I got my mouth open for some reason. I, I, I can't be the only one that does that. You go for the fake yawn or you think you got a yawn, but you really don't have a yawn. So you just, you're sitting there like a hungry, hungry hippo. One of the, the biggest ones for me, like the encounters I would always have would be also that was in school. Cause I'm going to try and keep this somewhat organized. It's like a cheese board, but you're going to have all your goudas to the left. You know what I'm saying? I don't really know what cheese boards look like, but just roll with me. So you're in school. You ask the teacher for help. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you need help. You don't know what the hell you're doing. You need help. So you raise your hand. You have them come over. And then for some reason, instead of standing at a good distance, they get right up in your ear and are like whispering to you. And I, I, I know I'm not the only one. At that moment in time, I'm like, yeah, I don't have a question anymore. I'm just waiting for you to get away from my right eardrum. I don't know why you're so close to my ear. I also, that breath is hot, my boy. I don't know what you're eating. That smells like coffee and I don't even know what. Got me feeling like we in some kind of 90s, early 2000s rom-com on the pottery wheel. I mean, what are you doing so close behind me talking about some, some comprehension questions? Like, bruh, I... I'm not absorbing anything of what you're saying. You you keep talking and then you're like, oh no, you don't get it. It's like, yeah, but I do get that breath though. In my head, I'm like, I'll take the deduction. I don't care. I just, anything, like you're performing a concert in my right ear and you know it goes down on the pottery wheel in those movies too. I don't really get that personally, like why that's such a like cliche in those movies. But it, you know, it's kind of like, yeah, let me help you. I know you can't make a circle with your hands. like. I don't really get that, but I don't know. People that are into that are into that. It is what it is, but y you know it goes down on that pottery. I just had to throw that in there. Whenever I'm getting a haircut too, when they take me over to get like the the get my head like washed before the cut, because I usually have like quite a bit of hair. They can't just hit me with the spray bottle. Um, not literally hit me, but like you know what I'm saying. When I say hit, it, you know it's yeah. They get you in that like little like bucket seat thing. I don't know who designed that, but they're like, all right, yeah, so I got an idea. Let's put the chair at a 45 degree angle and then the basket to get your head washed, let's just have it go at a hard 90. That'll be real good on the neck muscles. You know, honestly, they should just put a chiropractor right there, just like include it in your payment. Just be like, this is the adjustment you're going to need because when you get up, you're going to be feeling like You've been watching the sky for a few hours. I don't know. It's just, it's weird to me that that's such a weird angle. But you're getting your head washed, you know, doing your thing. They got that water on. It's going directly in your ears because they're doing a, a good job. And uh, they ask you, you know, is, is it too warm? Is it too hot? And that's one of those things where, like, no matter what, you could have liquid magma on your scalp skin. And you still have to tell them, oh, no, it's good. 
There could literally be steam coming off your head. You're going to say, oh, no, it's it's a good temp. So that's just one of those. I just had to throw that in there. I'm going to say that a lot, but I know that happens to a lot of people. But the other time I was getting a cut, I heard some some older lady say, you know, your hair looks amazing. You know, I'm sitting there. I got my whole, like, I'm looking at the sky. I got my neck back. And I'm just like, yo, like, look at look at her. You know, so I'm thinking, you know, I'm about to say thank you. Then my stylist goes, oh, thank you. I appreciate it. And then the lady goes, oh, the colors and... And I'm like, ooh, really dodged one there. That's like when somebody you think is waving at you, but they're wait. so you wave back and then they're actually waving at the person behind you. It's like, yeah, let me just clap my hands together and just go home and go to bed, honestly. Like, that's just one of those things. So I couldn't imagine how I would have felt if I said thank you in that moment. I mean, that would have just been like, I, I got my like chin hanging out. Oh my goodness, it, that, that was a Hall of Fame save for sure. One thing I'm noticing too, when it comes to like the social encounters is a new thing. I, I, I like picked up on it recently, but a new thing when you're talking to people or saying something or it happens to me a lot. Cause I guess I say a lot of whack stuff, even though I'm like not trying to be whack, but people will go, Oh, he said this, you know, they'll say what you just said. And in my head, I'm like, what, like, what is this? A narration contest? Like what? Yeah, I did say that. It's like everything I say, it's like they're reciting it for like a poem or something. It's like, I don't understand why you got to say I said that every time I say it. It's like, yeah, I know I said it. Like, I'm not a robot. Like, what what's happening over here, man? What's happening? I'm just trying to eat my chicken. You're over here talking about some he said this and that. Anyways, that's going to do it for the video. It was kind of a hodgepodge video. Kind of a, you know, I threw a lot of different stuff in there. It wasn't like as smooth of transitions as I would have liked, but I still think it was... I still think it was pretty good, but if you if you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.